Talk Spiccato. I'm Tobias Murphy, and this is Murphy Music Academy. And no, I am not playing the whole thing. And of course, if you find yourself needing a little bit more personalized help with your spiccato, then don't hesitate to shoot an email to admin at murphymusicacademy.org to set up your trial lesson. Now, spiccato and really all bouncing bow strokes are probably some of the most important things you will learn in terms of advanced violin technique, but they can also be some of the most elusive. <laughs> To truly master the bouncing bow strokes, you have to have complete control over the six major motions of the right arm, those being the motion from the shoulder, elbow, wrist, fingers, and then the rotation motions of the upper arm and the forearm. And even if you have complete control over all of those motor patterns, if you don't also have a very intimate understanding of the physics of the bow, spiccato ain't gonna happen. To properly learn spiccato, we're going to focus on those two factors, the physics of the bow and the motor patterns necessary in order to execute the bow stroke. So first, let's talk about the physics of the bow. Now, I'm quite confident that if you've been playing the violin for any length of time, you've probably already discovered that your bow can quite easily bounce, usually when you don't want it to. Now, I actually already made a video on how you can stop Shaky Bow, which you should definitely go watch after this video. And of course, if you find yourself liking this video already, then go ahead and hit that like button. Really helps me out. Anyway, so we know that the bow can very easily bounce, but how do we make it bounce only when we want it to? To figure this out, first things first, we are going to actually handicap our bow hold. Now, you see my nice Franco-Belgian bow hold here. I'm going to keep the thumb in the same spot, but instead of placing the fingers where they should be, like this, I'm actually going to place all of them at the crease of the base knuckle, like this. Kind of an exaggerated cello bow hold. Now, the reason we are going to hold the bow like this when we're practicing the basics of bouncing the bow is because this is going to force us to work with only what the bow can do naturally. If I hold the bow normally, it might be too easy for me to engage my index finger in trying to push the bow into the string, or my pinky in trying to take the bow out of the string, but if I neutralize all the fingers, so they're all at equal points on the hand, then I am forced to work with what the bow just has for me already. And by the way, just as a general rule of technique, if you ever find yourself feeling like you're forcing something in violin playing, you're probably doing it wrong. So, to practice this, we're just going to take our handicapped bow hold and hold the bow just a little bit above the strings and then just gently let it bounce to the string. You probably want to be around the balance point of the bow. And there's a tiny bit of rotation motion in the hand that keeps the bounce going. Basically, think of it as just like dribbling a basketball, right? If you force it too much, you might stop the dribble. But we want to be able to just essentially use the natural bounce of the bow with just a smiled, just a tiny bit of encouragement from the hand and the forearm. And generally, you're going to find that the bow bounces best around somewhere between the middle and the balance point. If you try doing it too much here, yeah, you can make it bounce there, but I have to put a lot more effort here, and I just know from experience that that doesn't actually work in the spiccato stroke very well, so you're going to want to stay right around here. Now, once you have a good understanding of the bounce of the bow, then the next thing you can practice is just doing a little bit of opening from the arm. And this is where we get into the issue of controlling the different joints in the arm, because what you don't want to do is move from the shoulder. If your spiccato is gonna come from your shoulder, it's not going to work. The spiccato has to be a combination of a little bit of forearm rotation to drop the bow to the strings to engage the natural bounce, and then a small opening of the elbow. So what this would look like would be like this. So I'm going to get that bounce going, and then I'm just going to gently open my elbow. It's not gonna sound that pretty, but once again, this is all about finding the feeling of the natural bounce of the bow. And by the way, I know I said no motion from the shoulder. You are allowed a certain amount of sympathetic motion from the shoulder. So the impetus of the bow motion is still coming from the elbow, but if there's a little bit of wiggle in the arm, that's okay. We just don't want to initiate 
the motion of the bow stroke from the shoulder. Now, once you've familiarized yourself with just the natural bounce of the bow, then it's time to work on the second issue, which is a little bit what we just talked about in terms of the actual physical motions of the arm. As I said before, we want to make sure that the bow is a combination of rotation of the forearm to drop, and then also the opening and closing of the elbow. However, even if you understand the natural springiness of the bow, and you're completely doing the motions here correctly, a lot of students still run into the problem that their spiccato tends to sound like this. Way too percussive. You see, we run into a problem here when we're trying to do a thrown stroke in that we only can really get a resonant sound out of the violin if the bow moves horizontally on the strings. And when we're bouncing the stroke at a very fast speed, we really don't have a lot of time for the bow to actually move in that way across the string. Now I say we don't have a lot of time, but we actually do have some time. So what we have to do is practice it this way. So we're going to really slow down all of the motions that make up the spiccato like this. So again, I'm going to gently drop the bow to the string. We can resume our good bow hold now. Gently drop the bow to the string with the rotation of the forearm. And then once it's hit the string, going to gently open the elbow and then lift the bow, drop it again in the same spot, then gently close the elbow and lift it again and repeat. And as you're doing this, you want to shorten the length of time between the dropping and the opening or closing of the elbow. So, and get it shorter faster. Now, it will take quite a bit of experimentation, but eventually you will find the perfect ratio between the vertical motion and the horizontal motion. And as you go a little bit faster, you can start to combine that with the natural bounce of the stroke, and there you have all the ingredients necessary for a good spiccato. Spiccato is really not much more complicated than this. The difficulty really is just in finding the proper ratio for each ingredient. And of course, as you get better at spiccato, you might find yourself wanting to vary the various ingredients. You actually might find yourself wanting to do a little bit more percussive stroke. And then other times you might want to make it a little bit more resonant. Keep experimenting with this and you will soon find yourself with a new broad palette of tone colors that you can engage in your spiccato. Now that's basically it for spiccato, but I do think I should speak a little bit about spiccato's sister stroke, sautier. Now sautier is a bounced stroke, but not in the same way as spiccato, in the fact that it's not a thrown stroke. Spiccato instead engages the natural springiness of both the bow and the string by pushing down using wrist motion into the string and then f allowing that springiness of both the string and the stick to push the bow back up. By pushing the bow down into the string with the wrist motion and then allowing the natural springiness of the string and of the bow stick to push the bow back up, if you go fast enough, you create a tiny little bounce that if you go fast enough, creates a very clear articulation. And that is really all there is to Santier. Once again, it's just something that's going to take quite a bit of experimentation, but I personally found it easier to learn and to teach than spiccato. Anyway, I hope that clears up a few things about how the bouncing bow strokes work in violin. They really aren't complicated, but because they engage so much with the natural physical properties of the violin and the bow, it takes just a little bit of experimenting to execute properly. But once you find yourself more familiar with the basic motions, it's really not that difficult. I've been Tobias Murphy for Murphy Music Academy, always here to remind you that there is no pleasure in mediocrity. Happy practicing, and I'll see you next time.